Secretary, let me preface what I'm about to say. I'm saying you got a big portfolio umbrella. Uh, some of the issues that we're going to be discussing here are more specific to your colleague, who is the Assistant Secretary for African Affairs. Um, and I get it, but since you're the representative of the State Department here, uh, take my questions in that spirit. Uh, so there have been uh, published reports that are highly critical of the administration of Sudan policy. Among the things that it says is that there was uh, memos written and circulated within the State Department's Bureau of African Affairs warning of US uh, risk of current US policy in Sudan and listing potential scenarios that could emerge uh, in the rivalry between Buhan and Hermedi, including full-scale conflict. They were heavily redacted, never got to the secretary's desk. Uh, it has been noted that Buhan and Hermedi were amassing forces around Khartoum, uh, and that at lower levels, uh, statements were being made about that as a reality of a real challenge to the possibility of conflict breaking out. There is talks about from a several dozen uh, both officials and advocates, uh, Sudanese activists, who describe a deeply flawed U.S. policy process on brokering talks in Sudan in the run-up to the conflict, monopolized by a select few officials who shut the rest of the interagency team out of deliberations uh, and quieted a chorus dissent uh, over the direction of U.S.-Sudan policy. Uh, it goes on to say, from the outset, there is a consistent and willful dismissal of views that questioned whether UN talks would be a recipe for success or for failure. Those warnings were ignored, and instead the U.S. built a, quote, I'm quoting now, a dream palace of a political process that has now crashed down on the people of Sudan. Uh, I have noted on several occasions that uh, Assistant Secretary of State Fee seems to be have aversions to sanctions as any tool at any time for any purpose. That's a problem, because I don't know how else you induce, especially uh, two entities, two individuals like this, to act when you have, I don't know what you have to offer uh, at the end of the day, or what consequence they face. Uh, and lastly, uh, civil society seems to be cut out, and disillusioned activists have lost faith in the, Uni faith in the United States. That's all bad news none of which is responded to in any of the testimony that we've heard here today. So can you take um, uh, a minute or so to talk to me about all of that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me start by saying that when the, when the uh, leader Hamdok was thrown out uh, we, in October of 21, uh, we did institute harsh penalties against Sudan, which were controversial internally given how strong they were. If you recall, after that um, move, the, we designated the Central Reserve Police. Uh, we also suspended all bilateral aid and debt relief and iffy support. Uh, there were questions internally whether that was the right thing to do because, of course, some of that has implications uh, for the Sudanese people. But the goal of those moves, which were made on this secretary's watch and this administration's watch, were to shock the parties into getting serious about a broad framework for transition. Thereafter, we supported the Sudanese own framework that emerged, which was led largely by the civilians. Now you could ask the question whether there was a broad enough community of civilians involved, but this was a process designed by the Sudanese themselves, and steadily used pressure on the generals and the parties to try to work through all of the issues getting back to a transition. As I said to you, yes, uh, we saw the generals keeping their own options open. They did not put all of their forces into garrison. Um, oh 
Um, however, that structure did work through many of the issues preparatory to a return to civilian rule. We were left with one issue, which was whether these two generals would integrate their forces, because you can't have one more, more than one army in a country at a time. There was um, incredible effort made, including by the secretary himself, to offer options for the two of them for how these forces could be integrated various different ways, not just by us, but by the African Union, by our partners. And then, but, as I said, unfortunately, they chose the path of war, not the path of integration. At various points during these talks, since October and onward, um, we have seen tensions spike between these two generals. At every previous point, with our partners, with the Sudanese civilians, we were able to tamp things down and get them back to the table. That was not successful on April 15th. Um, that said, throughout this period, we had been warning American citizens not to travel to Sudan. We had been strength strengthening our own internal procedures should things get violent again. Um, look, it is a tragedy yet again. Can we get them this process restarted? We'll see. Will it be the same process? No, it'll have to be broader, but that's where we are. Yeah, well, look, uh, I'm going to close by simply saying it seems to me that we need to have a process uh, that, that, number one, uses our intelligence, and, and the Bureau at the State Department is pretty good. They've been uh, on the mark sometimes better than some of our other intelligence agencies. And we need to red tag or red team, however you might refer it, some of our presu presumptions. Because you can't work on there everything that's going to be the rosiest thing uh, and then hope that it will turn out that way, you know, buttressed by some hard work. But nonetheless, you have to have other, uh, uh, other availabilities uh, to think through what is the process of consequences that, that it doesn't work out as you aspire for it to. And so uh, I am deeply concerned that the, we do that on more than one occasion and we find ourselves with the consequences of not doing so. I think that's incredibly important for the department to internalize uh, and, and to think about um, because I, I, I'm deeply concerned about the information that exists. I know that I used to deal with Senator Coons as he was trying to uh, find a pathway forward and I was insisting on taking care of the victims of um, terrorism. Uh, sanctions ended up proving the ability to get us there uh, in the right way. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, but, but for it, I, I don't think that we would have taken care of those victims. Senator Risch. Uh, 